No one is more surprised than myself at how much I enjoyed this book. However, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood is a book that I think needs a discussion of context in order to be reviewed. So many years post the publication of The Handmaid's Tale, The Testaments was announced, and I think for most people the question in question was why? Why does this need to exist? In many ways, like, nobody was asking for this book. Like, nobody really, like, needed a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. And then from my perspective, it was announced and everyone was like, yes, yes, this is what I've always wanted. And I'm kind of like, is it? And all was well and good. Uh, people hated or loved the idea of a Handmaid's Tale sequel. When somebody is as uh, popular as Margaret Atwood is, the discourse is going to be vast and many, right? But then the book was longlisted for the Booker Prize, and now shortlisted for the Booker Prize 2019. And this was pre-publication date, so the discourse around the idea of a Handmaid's Tale sequel, in light of 2019, in light of a television show already having been produced about the first, and continued past the events of that first novel, the question intensifies. The Testaments is going to be the book that for people who only read one book a year, they will read this book. The Testaments is going to be read by non-readers. This is a book that people are excited about. This is a cultural household name that is now being continued as part of quote-unquote canon. And so, why does this book need to exist? It doesn't. And I think in many ways, it is a triumph that Margaret Atwood reminds us that it's not necessary to exist. The Testaments is a book that is, I would argue, more entertaining than it is culturally relevant. And I, I, think, I think this way because The Handmaid's Tale, in many ways, has been blown out of proportion. The Handmaid's Tale was written in the 80s, right? And that was a book for a specific time and about a specific world in which we lived. And it's unfair to place that book as, as the mean and standard of what should be being talked about today. So when the television show, or the Hulu show, was announced, that in many ways rectified a lot of the problems from the book having been published in the 80s. And now The Testaments is Margaret Atwood's way of saying what needs to be said in 2019. Or rather, to go along with my vague thesis of this video, what she thinks should be said. In, in 2019, or on an even stronger level, what narratively makes this story interesting in 2019. Ultimately, my takeaway uh, uh, of The Testaments was that it was, it was really fun. It was a really fun book. It read like really, really good YA. And I say that for many reasons. Um, spoilers, mild spoilers, there's like a lost princess narrative in this text and it, it's pretty, like, on-the-nose cliché. One of the characters, while thrust into a very devastating and intense life scenario, still has time to reflect on the crush she might have on somebody involved, and, and really, as a character, has absolutely no awareness of, of the stakes in which she is in. Um, so, maybe it's just that Margaret Atwood can't write younger characters, or teen characters, um, I was hoping that it would be a commentary on the character not being quite aware of the gravity of her situation, but really it just read as a character um, being developed outside of the gravity of her situation, and it seemed like a writing error. But even then, there's a certain amount of joy in reading that. There was a certain amount of nostalgia for those bad YA books that I had read back in the day, and Dystopian was made popular through YA. The book, however, was not entirely YA, and I don't want to go too far down that road or tangent. Um, there were parts of this text that were brilliant and nuanced and, and really well developed, of which was the perspective of Aunt Lydia. The ordeals that Aunt Lydia goes through, to me, seemed entirely evocative, almost pulled directly from the transcripts of testimonies from survivors of the Church of Scientology. Aunt Lydia is thrown into a, a, a holding cell and is constantly beaten and tased. 
Um, she's broken down in many ways. And I think of the documentary Going Clear or, or the book Going Clear and there was that trailer that a bunch of men were holed up in and they were beaten constantly. Um, and the parallels were just too many for me not to think that it was an intentional move by Margaret Atwood, if only to critique the fact that Elizabeth Moss, who stars in the TV show version of The Handmaid's Tale, a TV show about a religious cult, is a member of the Church of Scientology, is a member of a religious cult. So I hope, I, I really hope, Margaret Atwood was being pointed in that because it's, it's scenes that we have not experienced yet from the world of Gilead. So um, moments like that I found riveting and, and socially relevant and interesting. And she's not an author who I would, I would put that past. I, I, I would fully expect her, savvy as she is, to do something like that. The plot of this text does play out in a sort of cliché planned way. Um, maybe the plot wasn't the most important thing being discussed with the novel. Um, however, I felt like that detracted from the novel as a whole. Um, something more complex, I think, would have been able to lift the text to a higher place. And certain parts of Margaret Atwood's writing really irk me. I, I, I have an example of this. Um, there's a character who is discussing her relationship with her adoptive parents, and she has the following lines. Despite all that she did for me, Melanie had a distant smell. She smelled like a floral guest soap in a strange house I was visiting. What I mean is, she didn't smell to me like my mother. And then after that is a paragraph describing wolves and how wolves uh, have the sense of smell and can recognize their pack. And all of this would have been well and good, perhaps a, a bit redundant already. Um, if it were establishing something in a text, or if we had yet to experience these characters in question. But already, through the action and dialogue of the text, we had seen the distance between the narrator and the character of Melanie. And so, ultimately, we get this hyper-compounding of, of message that just seems overwritten and, and really becomes aggravating at some points, because what Margaret Atwood does, she does really well. And to see it torn apart by her just doing it too much is frustrating. I understand that motherhood and female-female and relationships uh, are, are a central focus of this text, and maybe compounding that theme in such an overwritten way is, is a goal of hers to drive it home to us, but to me that reads like she didn't trust her reader. I feel conflicted about this book, but I cannot deny how utterly fun it was. I got really invested, and I was not expecting to. I went in the most skeptical for this text. I am not a really big Margaret Atwood fan. I understand her cultural relevance, I understand her impact on writing and, and, and the craft of writing, but in many ways as a person and as an author she does frustrate me, so to be delighted which is probably not the best word to use for the content that this book is about, but to be delighted by this book in the way I was, was such a treat. I do not in any way think that this book should win the Booker Prize 2019. From prose craft alone, other books do better. However, I don't mind this book being as popular as it is. I'm not going to get all hipster about it. I, I don't mind this book being the one book that people are going to read in a year. It was really good. It was really entertaining, and there's plenty about it to discuss. So no, this book wasn't necessary to write. But Margaret Atwood wrote it, and it's here, and it doesn't suck. So I think we should all talk about it, assuming you want to read it. Um, it is discussion-worthy, in my opinion. So have you read The Testaments? Do you want to read The Testaments? Are you reading any of the Booker shortlisted books? Comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.